Okay guys, in this video I will talk about how to design any eccentrically loaded protein. Okay, previously I have made a video based on axially loaded column and how to design that isolated protein. Okay, and this video has been requested by Nupur Das. She has asked about making a video on eccentric protein. Okay, so before starting this video, if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited. Okay, so let's start today's topic. Before diving into the eccentric footing, let's recap some basic concept of concentric footing. Here you know that the only axial load is being applied. Okay, there is no such moment or there is no such eccentricity between the axis of the column and as well as the load. Okay, as a result of which here you can see that the pressure distribution is uniform. Okay, now if you know the value of the safe bearing capacity of the soil, definitely you can find out the required area to carry this load. Okay, and once you have find out the area which is required, you can easily find out the length and breadth of the footing. But in this case, you have to maintain the ratio of breadth and depth of the column equals with the ratio of breadth and length of the footing. Now, why you have to do so? To maintain the equal bending moment in each of this direction, right? Now, let's dive into the eccentric footing, okay? If we compare with the concentric footing, what are the difference in eccentric footing? Definitely, here you can see that we have applied only the axial load and also the load has been applied along the axis. But practically, it is never possible to apply any concentric load or axial load directly along this axis. Always there will be some eccentricity, right? Not only that, when you are designing any column or footing, you will have some value of moment. And now this moment may be due to this eccentric axial load or may be due to lateral load, okay? If you have any lateral load acting on this column, of course, you will have some moment here right or you may have both the cause or you can say that this moment is coming due to this eccentric load as well as the lateral load okay and if you have now load and as well as a moment you can definitely represent this moment in terms of eccentricity where eccentricity is nothing but m by p right so now you have to design a footing where the axial load P is being applied at some eccentricity E. Okay. Now let's see what will happen once this load is being applied with some eccentricity with the axis of the column or the footing. Okay. So due to this eccentricity, the pressure distribution as you can see in case of a concentric footing, pressure distribution was uniform right but once you have applied your load eccentrically the pressure distribution will not be uniform it will varies and this variation will depend on the magnitude of the eccentricity how well before discussing how this magnitude of eccentricity affect this pressure distribution we will assume that our footing has a rectangular area okay so this is only for the discussion purpose right so once we have a rectangular footing and we have an axial load and also a bending moment m okay which we have represented by this eccentricity of this axial load and in this plan you can see that the moment is being applied like this about this axis right so due to this axial load okay so if we have a simply axial load and a footing with area a what is the pressure here simple p by a and let's say we have a cross section like this where we are applying some moment what is the stress compressive or tensile stress simply at any direction from the neutral axis y we can find out the stress as my by i i is the moment of inertia about the neutral axis so here we are applying the moment about this axis 
so about this axis what is the i simply b times l q l is the depth here by 12th right and the maximum stress will happen at this edge just like the beam cross section if we have any beam cross section like this where we are applying a moment about this neutral axis the maximum stress will occur at the top and at the bottom right the same thing also happen here okay so the stress due to this bending moment m is coming as m y divided by i got it now if you simply put a as the bl and i as blq by 12 and y as l by 2 because the total depth of the footing is l and the maximum distance from this neutral axis to the farthest point is l by 2 right you will get that at this left edge the stress is coming as this and at this right edge the stress is coming as simply p by bl 1 plus right 6e by l so now you can see that the stress at any point of this footing is a function of eccentricity e so you can say that q is simply is a function of e now based on the value of the eccentricity e our pressure will varies okay so let's see what will happen if this eccentricity e is less than l by 6 okay in this formula here you can see that it is coming as p b by l 1 minus 6 e by l okay this is the formula of pressure now if this e is less than l by 6 okay we will get the pressure distribution like this and here you can see that every point is under compressive load okay and we have a minimum q value and maximum q value right so based on this q max you can design your footing okay and also based on this q max you can provide the reinforcement at the footing finding out the maximum bending moment okay now what will happen if e that is equals with l by 6 we have discussed about e that is less than l by 6 now if e is equals with l by 6 you can see here that at the left portion the pressure is 0 but at the right portion the pressure is 2p by bl but in normal cases if we have a footing where the load is being applied concentrically with p and area b by l what is the pressure intensity simply p by bl and it is uniform but here you can see due to eccentricity e equals with l by 6 we will have a compression at the right side with twice value that is 2 times p by l but at the left side it is 0 how interesting right now the final cases what will happen if we have a eccentricity which is greater than l by 6 well in this case you can see that the part of the footing is under the action of tension and part of the footing is under the action of compression as a result in this zone the footing try to go up okay so to resist this uplifting you have to ensure that your footing is sufficiently anchored or even if you don't provide the anchorage in that case you have to provide sufficient overburden soil or weight okay to resist this uplift and when you are considering or designing the footing dimension to consider the pressure you have to assume only this zone okay you cannot consider the whole footing for calculating the pressure okay why because this part of the footing is detached from the soil so you cannot consider that so to calculate the maximum pressure you have to consider only the soil that is under compression okay so i am not going into the calculation detail this is the basics when you are going to design any eccentric footing 
Okay, so that's it. If you love this video, don't forget to share it.